morning. Today we are going to be talking about a very important aspect of examination, which is of the breast. And I am privileged to be sharing space with a person I would like to name as a teacher of teachers. Uh, I had the good fortune of having trained under him when I was a postgraduate. And I believe that someone who understands the science and art of surgery is the best person to teach you the nuances of the art itself. And uh, examination is one such art. Uh, as Dr. Kakar would say that you could actually lose the battle even before it starts if you're not able to examine a patient properly. So today we will be taking up um, breast examination. Uh, professor Kakar uh, retired as uh, a professor of surgery uh, in uh, Molana Azad Medical College. And I'm Dr. Geeta Kadaiprat and I am a breast surgeon at uh, Max Hospital. Um, and so now we will take you through the very important aspect of uh, examination of uh, breast. Look at the temperature of uh, the breast and then that's the first thing that you would do. And now you would go around to uh, palpating the breast to see uh, there is a lump in the breast as the patient has come with that complaint. So like I said, you have to divide the breast into four quadrants like that. That's the central quadrant and that's the uh, inframammary crease area which also needs to be examined. And then place your hand on the, if you want to, whichever quadrant you want to start off, but make sure that all the quadrants are covered and don't raise your hand above the breast. Just slide your hand because when you raise the hand, you may lose some intervening area. So just slide the uh, hand, just rotate gently. And if there is any pain, try and, okay. One thing that I need to tell you when you're doing a palpation, always palpate the normal breast first because that is what is your reference. So you palpate the normal breast first and then you come to the abnormal breast and then when you're doing that, try and avoid those areas where the patient says, look, I have pain. Because again, that's a confidence losing measure. If you were to straight jump to the area where there is pain, the patient is going to feel a little let down that I thought this person is going to treat me kindly, but you have actually overstepped uh, that mandate. So what you need to do is just, uh, suppose this is the area of tenderness, just give it a miss. Do this quadrant, come down here to the lower outer quadrant and then to the upper inner quadrant. And then you uh, have to do the uh, central quadrant and then the inframammary crease area. And then come to this area which is a little tender and there make sure that you're applying minimal pressure and the point of time when the patient complains of pain, just ask her to relax and say, I'm not going to hurt you. It's important. So once you're done, uh, so once you have noticed where the lump is, say suppose this lump is here in the upper outer quadrant. So I will make a mental note. Initially, it's a good idea to have a tape to measure the size of the lump. Measure the size of the lump. Try and feel the lump, the surface of the lump. What kind of surface is, is it? What is the consistency of the lump? Is it soft? Is it firm? Is it hard? And now, in the times that we're doing oncoplastic surgeries, it is also important to understand what is the distance of the lesion from the areolar margin, because basically you are planning ahead, but you need to have that measure also. So now let's get down to palpating the breast. The important thing to understand is you start palpating from the normal breast, because that's your reference breast, because you will compare everything that you are feeling on this breast with the other side. Because sometimes you can have fibroadenosis and they are symmetrical, so you know that's nothing to worry about. So you start off with the normal breast, the same way, divided into four quadrants, upper inner, upper outer, lower outer, up, uh, lower inner, and uh, the central quadrant, which is the nipple and areolar complex, and the inframammary crease. So you're using the flat of the hand to do that. And when you're using the flat, don't try and jump quadrants because then you can lose information if you were to, suppose there's a lump here and you were to do this and you were to jump here, you would miss the lump there. So you need to move your 
hand, just slide, just glide your hand on the breast without really lifting it. And if your patient has said that there is an area of tenderness, make sure that you address that area at the end and be gentle about it. Suppose there is pain here, so I will start here. Gentle, gentle press and rotate and press and glide and rotate and some pressure because you can have lumps closer to the skin and you can have lumps closer to the um, muscle. So if there is something closer to the muscle, some amount of pressure is required. So the first round is light pressure. The second round is a little more pressure. Don't forget the nipple areolar complex because that is where you could have lumps under the areola or under the nipple. And then uh, you have to see the inframammary area where again you will try and feel for any lumps there. Once you're done, the next thing that you should be looking at is the nipple. So when you want to elicit nipple discharge, don't do this because this is how patients come to you uh, talking about discharge, that they have expressed discharge by pressing the breast like this. This is completely wrong. What you need to do is just use these two fingers, pressure that way and then perpendicular to that this way. So that is how you should elicit discharge. So your fingers are on the areola and if there is any, you know, possibly a papilloma or a duct which is harboring some, uh, some small tumor or there is even DCIS which is pre-invasive cancer, it will manifest as discharge but this is all the pressure that you're supposed to uh, apply because if you pressure, apply too much of pressure, it is possible to elicit discharge from any nipple. So um, the other thing is, you know, if you want to look for tethering of skin. So dimpling is something that you see on inspection and tethering is something that you determine on palpation. So you're trying to pinch the skin off the, of the lump. So if it is not possible to pinch the skin off the lump, you would say that the uh, lump is tethered to the uh, skin. And then uh, the other thing that is there is, like I said, nipple retraction is something that you've picked up on inspection. So be very careful on trying to look for something under the nipple also. So that is the other thing that you should be uh, careful about. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kakar, can you add some more to what I've said? Sometimes a patient can help you, can give you a guide as to what is the discharge from which quadrant of the areola or the nipple of the discharge. Tell a patient to sh express the discharge so that you get an idea and then you can focus to that quadrant only. As she said, tethering is very important. Tethering can be one of the earliest evidence of malignancy which has come out of his capsule and has infiltrated into ligaments of Cooper rather than a direct infiltration into the skin, which is very advanced. Even ligament of poop infiltration is advanced, but still much earlier. And for that, one has to, as she said, you gently either pinch the skin or you press the skin on either side and see does she get it folded or does she get puckered. That's how you get an idea whether there is a tethering of skin.